You always wonder what people think about your head cam. Just be careful, Trav. This freaking corner freaks me out. Some people are the happiest when they're miserable. It's just a pipe. Come on. What's up, Pops? Watch your step. Good morning. Beautiful morning it is, huh, Benny? Yeah, it's very nice outside. What do you think about this job site? It's nice. Que pasó, muchacho? Not much. What do you think about the job? Little job. <laughs> yep. Little two day banger. <laughs> two day banger. Beautiful property. It's just a little um, summer camp for this customer. They obviously do not live here. It's just a small lake camp. And now they want to have a patio to host their company. We're going to be going to the edge of this house. <clears throat> the wall's in pretty good condition. It's all natural stone with a poured concrete cap. So boys, this whole area is gonna be patio. We're going to the front step right here. And then we're gonna go all the way to this side. To the fence or is it gonna keep going? No, nope, right to the edge of the house. I hope the clouds stay like this all day, man. That would be I like the sun, but I also like not being able to see the sun. I feel it. Wow. What a freaking display of cloud work by God, though, huh? Seen better. Seen better? <laughs> you seen better, Chad? Nope. How's your finger? Down to just a band-aid now, huh? Yep. Is this is it visible? A little bit oh, more yeah, it's black. Yeah, you can see it. All the way to the bed. Or cuticle, whatever the hell it's called. Almost time to go back to school, Trav. You ready? No. Yeah. No. You have a good summer? Yeah. Maybe not the most exciting and entertaining, but most money you've ever made in a summer. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have many summers to compare, but <laughs> a couple off schools on this job. Got a pretty good size elevation change, but there's a nice access point to get in and out. You know, you gotta love when customers think about you. <laughs> Moved everything, got the lawn, got everything ready for us to be here today. That's always nice. This customer is actually a viewer of the channel. That's how he uh, got in contact with me. He started with watching my plow videos and um, got pretty interested in the other ones. So it's really cool. I found out that I was I was local. It's about 15 minutes from my house. Reached out and there it is. Here we are. I uh, mentioned it, I think, in a couple videos, probably more than that now back, about um, how many leads I've actually gotten purely through my YouTube channel, not any other kind of advertising. I don't want to say, like, I'm surprised about that because it really is a good way to advertise. I just wasn't expecting it in the first couple years of my channel to get the amount of work I've gotten purely from YouTube. So very cool. Very, very cool. Met some really nice people through it. And um, like I've said before, it's just a very good opportunity here on YouTube. And I'm super grateful for all of you guys that watch the videos and keep up with it. The support has been astounding. A little bit of negativity here and there, but I don't think there's any YouTuber that hasn't dealt with that. Some people are the happiest when they're miserable. Weird when you think about it, but it's true. I am gonna be leaving my forks up here because I do have my paver delivery coming at some point. So it's just uh, three pallets of pavers half a pallet of border pavers. I don't know where he's gonna pull, he'll probably pull up over here somewhere. 
I'll have him drop the pallets here. Every day that thing's making its money back for me, Trav. Five bucks at a time. So my plan is to back it up so when I come up the hill I can just dump into the truck. We're gonna see if it's a little tippy. I think I'll be all right. I'm gonna probably try to hug over here as much as I can. You always wonder what people think about your head cam. I gotta go more. Might be all right. Oh, well, we gonna see. such a dangerous corner tough call I might be able to pull it up and load it from the back it might be what I have to do yeah right on that corner a little bit past the corner that's it yeah it's just too steep too steep maybe I didn't have to pull it that much but People come around the corner, see that quickly, as quickly as possible.
all the turf is removed and up in that pile the sun's out boys after a little sprinkle i don't know if you guys got it or not. <laughs> oh yeah we got it yeah sprinkle no, just sprinkle <laughs> just a sprinkle yeah i really did too it just came and went super quick so we're gonna load him up again with some grass and turf we've been digging out along the edge here the customer wants like a uh, decorative stone crushed stone around the whole edge of the house so you don't have to weed whack around it anymore dude benny would be going nuts Trav, Ben's son loves airplanes and helicopters. And trucks. And trucks. But he doesn't get as excited about uh, trucks as he does airplanes, man. No. You saw one that close? He's flipping out. <laughs> Excavating and backfilling, um, you know, can always get done a little quicker when you got some more trucks available. You know, I'm about a couple years into my business now. And my dump trail is really all I have available right now. And it just kind of slows it down a little bit. But with a small crew, it's really not much wasted time. Between Sen and Ben, back and forth places, there's enough things to do to stay busy before he comes back again. I spent a couple of years putting money aside and, and working on getting this machine. And now i got to be patient, work with what I got, and then hopefully I'll be in a position where I can get myself a dump truck uh, at some other point, maybe next year or the year after that. But either way, you just keep moving, keep rocking with what you got. And um, that's how you can get the stuff you need to get what you want. So I've mentioned it in videos before, but we always separate our turf from our fill because the dump spots around here don't like to have turf mixed in their fill or else it messes up the screening process and clogs the screener when they're making loom. Last bucket of turf, Trav. I thought I was going to mess up the words turf, Trav. That kind of stuff gets me. We still got a lot more turf to pull up around the hole exterior but we're just focusing on the patio today most of that stuff is on those back axles so i want to put this last bucket a little more on the tongue to even it out a little better but i can't do that going up this hill it's just way too steep guys been using skid steers for a while and you got to know your limits i was telling benny i was up here when i was first trying i had it lifted and it was feeling a little wobbly even with a full bucket of wet soil and grass so once you dump that out you drop like probably at least 500 to a thousand pounds out of your bucket now you're even lighter so you go floop you kick the soil out and then you just boom that'd be fun dude because with your arms fully in the air you would literally just barrel roll down the hill dude so dude we'll get you into position and get you out of here as soon as we can try to make this quick people come flying around that corner i don't get it Tarp this up real quick for him, and you can get out of here. Not yet. Yeah, you can stay there. One of those holes, yep. Yeah. All right, bud, low and slow. Cards in the console. Just be careful, Trav. This freaking corner freaks me out. Watch out, heads up. Oh, he's going around, Ben. 
Ben stopped because of the police officer. What do you think about that little drainage pipe, Trav? Are we going to cover that up? Yeah, for sure. It's probably just something to help with drainage that they put in when they built this a long time ago. Long, long time ago. Yeah, it's just a pipe. That's like pretty much the water level, Trav, is what that is. It's practically exactly water level. Yeah. Which we're not going to really be getting involved with that, you know. I don't know if I'm going to leave it open or fill it with three quarter. We'll see. I'm hoping that it's the only one, Trav, because if they got them like in line and we just start revealing them, it's going to be tough to dig here. Oh, yeah. That's why you got to go low and slow, little layers at a time. Some people would go in and just kind of dig the soil and the and that stuff out because where they dump they can mix it but if you have something like that you can end up setting yourself up for some problems it looks decent we got this silk fence over here we're really not going to have soil exposed for long by the end of the day it will have stone and fabric down there won't be any possibility for erosion maybe this one spot but i think a couple shovelfuls of dirt falling over the edge wouldn't be too big of a deal okay ben is off dumping the second load of turf me and trav are going to start excavating some more of this topsoil i'm going to try to just go a, a little layer at a time we're about four to five some places are six inches about um, below the top of our grade right now so we only need another three four inches maybe five in some areas and i know i don't talk about it every video but you gotta do dig safe. I, I do dig safe on these projects all the time because it just takes the um, liab liability off your shoulders. And honestly, that's number one concern to me all the time. Even like when Benny was out there in the road on this corner so I could put that one bucket in, it's like, as the business owner or even the, the foreman of a job, you know, you, your nerves definitely get up. The stress level is a little higher because you don't want anything happening to people, the equipment, nothing like that. And as the business owner, you don't want anything happening because insurance is key and you don't want to be having a bunch of insurance strikes against you. That's a good sub base right there. Pretty smooth, huh? Yep. Can't find any more pipes. Nice sand and gravel. It's wet right now because it has been a super wet year, but so that's good. That's a good sub base. This side over here, I'm gonna scrape a little bit of that loom down, but not much because we're already about four or five inches low there, and we're just gonna be a decorative stone bed. So we're just gonna go around and clean these edges up now. 
probably eight inches or so below that wall and with that nice sandy gravel like that it's good and in this kind of situation you know you're more worried about not getting too deep to mess with the water level this that and the other thing so if we got that eight inches nine inches throughout i'm completely fine with that it's a good sub base can't see it yep it, it don't got the front middle seat oh okay instead of it it's a that's where the shifter is and the shifter can fold down oh yeah space. nice so i know what you're talking about so he must be pretty happy then i mean not really <laughs> you know always, always another 40 grand oh yeah another payment yep On the what? Blue boat. I guess it depends on the blue. I like this boat a lot. I like it a lot. Like that's a perfect size for a couple of people. Family like you guys is, you need a pontoon boat or something. Oh yeah. I don't think they want one because yeah, it costs a lot. You guys have seen Richie and Travis and their brothers, but they're the eldest. You're the second eldest. And then you got three younger brothers five boys you guys are wild how can i say anything i never grew up with four brothers it just reminded me of that movie four brothers back in mark Wahlberg's prime <laughs> you ever heard of that movie nope it's a good one it's a uh four brothers kind of get involved with a gang or whatever and then the gang one of the gang members shoots down his their little brother so now there's three brothers and now the three brothers are seeking vengeance and they got it <laughs> it's a good movie it's a good movie there's definitely violence and swearing and not good stuff in it i watched it when i was younger it was a it was early 2000s movie very popular when it came out though what i think i'm gonna do bud is I'm gonna move this machine over there so I can fill in this side of the bucket. And I'm just gonna leave all the soil in there. So the rest of this, if you wanna throw in the wheelbarrow, then we can dump dump it over there. We'll get this whole area all set. Looks good, Trav. Yeah. So this edge over here we found was pretty squishy. It's hard to tell on camera, but we're probably only three, four inches above the water level. So the closer you get to the wall, the water is kind of pushed more forward. There's probably nothing like way over there, but the edge is getting a little squishy. So um, we're going to be careful of that for sure. And I'm probably going to incorporate some geo grid in our backfill along this edge of the wall just to help stabilize it. We got to set up some strings and find out where we're at. We may be just short of eight inches in some spots, but because of the water and the water could maybe get higher someday we're just not gonna it's not worth digging deeper we got plenty of depth for our pavers some chips i mean some uh three quarter stone and then some chip stone we did expose all the gravel though there's no topsoil left in the area it's all gravel you can see the difference too definitely has some good topsoil what'd you say what I'm mainly scared about for Disney. What? I'm just thinking. Gators. Gators. <laughs> Disney's probably got a lot of people in control of that. Mm -hmm. Don't go to the water. <laughs> they have signs. Don't yeah, go near the water. Yeah, that's silly to do that. Three-year-old was killed not too long ago. At Disney? Really? Whoa. Got close to the water. Boom. Dead. Come on. That's wild. Yeah. Scary thing. So we got a couple piles there, and we're going to have some more excavation to do under those piles. Waiting on Benny to come back. Once he comes back, I'm going to load him up. Probably going to have two or three loads of all this dirt. And every time he goes with one load, he's going to be coming back with a load of stone. And we're going to backfill. And that's really our only goal for today. Get it to a nice level to where tomorrow we can bring some chip stone, start screeding and laying pavers.
So now that we got the majority of the patio excavated to the top of our subsoil, we're going to be spreading a thin layer of this three-quarter clean stone over the subsoil, about an inch to an inch and a half thick. And what we're going to do then is compact it so that if there's any soft spots or holes in the subsoil, that stone will get packed into it. What it's also going to do is give us a nice firm base for when we lay out our geotextile stabilization fabric. This is an important step because I see a lot of guys out there that put fabric down without putting any stone underneath it. They put it over, maybe they compacted the soil, but they put it right over the soil. So if there's any sinkholes or any shifting underneath that fabric, the fabric's going to fall right into that hole. Putting this stone down and compacting it helps prevent that issue in the future. The fabric has a nice, strong base to, to set on. And what it's also going to do is when we backfill on top of the fabric, all the pressure from the stone on the top and the bottom helps open these strands of plastic that make up the geotextile fabric and help water permeate through easier. In my opinion, this step of the process is the absolute most important thing about it. You need to make sure that your subsoil is compacted very tight and this thin layer of stone helps with that in so many ways. This part of the process is basically your foundation. You're laying your foundation for your pavers. So taking that extra step to ensure no sinking or shifting will happen is a very good idea in my opinion. And I've been doing it for the past four and a half years now. This is the process I use for every hardscape install that I do. The amount of stone sometimes varies. And anything above 8 to 12 inches of stone you're going to want to compact in, in two to three lifts, depending on the size of your compactor. But in our situation, we're only going to be using about five inches of stone on top of our fabric. So we're going to be able to spread that out, get it to the correct height, and compact it just one time. As opposed to if we were using dense grade, we would probably have to do three lifts of about one and a half to two inches to make sure that nothing's going to shift in the future. That's the huge benefit of open grade base especially in a place like I live, Massachusetts, where we have multiple freeze-thaw cycles throughout the winter. I mean, you can have a couple days in the 50s and then go down to the 20s for the other three days. and It's just the, the temperatures fluctuate and vary so much that you need to have a base that is less prone to moving during those temperature changes. And when you use a dense-grade gravel, it fills with moisture. It you may not think that it does because it's underneath the pavers, but the gravel and the sand or stone dust becomes moist. And when those really cold temperatures come, the material expands. And once it expands and a few days of the 50s come along, it's going to all of a sudden retract. All that moisture is going to loosen up and the, the, the ground's going to move. The, sh the shifting of the sand or whatever bedding material you have is going to happen. And that's why pavers heave and sink. And over a couple of years of doing that, that's when the edges of a patio or walkway may fail and they start sinking off the edge. And it also was what creates a sinkhole in the patio. If you have a spot that wasn't compacted correctly or whatever the issue may have, it's going to sink. And this this base stone method, clean stone, really helps prevent that because you don't have fine materials in it. It's all very strong pieces of aggregate that are locked together with the angular edges of the stone. And the main reason the material does not shift when it freezes is because all those open spaces in the crushed stone allows for moisture to expand into when it freezes. And then when it has those open spaces, it doesn't end up pushing the material apart as opposed to a material like dense grade where there's fines in it. There's no open voids for the moisture to expand into. So what it does is push all the material apart. That doesn't happen with clean stone, not nearly as much. The only way that happens is if the stone is completely submerged in water, but that basically never happens under your patio unless it's a really, really out of the ordinary rainstorm. But even then, it slowly permeates into the ground, and then the water goes away on its own. 
But anyway, sorry for all that that talking. I just I still get a lot of comments about open grade bass, and even in the the industry, it's becoming a lot more popular. But there's still a lot of contractors that that lay pavers in the traditional method of dense grade and sand. So if you're a homeowner and you're looking to hire people to do the job, those are the questions you want to ask is what they're going to do for their base prep and what they're going to use for their bedding material. And if any of them tell you they're going to use stone dust, make sure you don't go with them. If people are going to use traditional dense grade and sand, you might want to uh, just do a little bit more research and figure out, um, you know, how their project's holding up and everything because... A lot of times now that that's the biggest reason for failure is is sand or stone dust as the bedding with dense grade underneath it. Good, beautiful morning, everybody. This is the life right here. 72 degrees, partly cloudy, breezy, working on the lake. What's up, Pops? How much, buddy? Watch your step. Oh, yeah. A beautiful day, huh? Yeah. Good to see you. Good to see you. I said, well, I'll go take a quick ride because I got to do, uh, head back like white because I got to call grandma. Hmm. And a happy meal you want today, Mall. <laughs> yeah, they bought this one, I don't, I don't know, I guess a few years back. It's just a cabin and they remodeled the whole thing. It was really in bad shape, I guess, so. Yeah. But it's just on stilts. It's a summer camp. Yeah, that's all. That's all. And it's good swimming, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, it's real deep right there, right when you get into it, yep. so. And you're putting what kind of patio in? Right yeah, patio right up to the edge. It was all grass before, but they just come here to hang out. It's real nice. Yeah, it's definitely nice. They found me by watching the channel. What's that? They, found, they got a hold of me by watching the channel. The guy likes my videos and everything. Nice. Did all the excavating yesterday. Yeah. So you stone, plastic, stone? Yep. Just a thin layer, compact the stone into the soil, plastic, and then more stone. So along the, um, the edge of this wall here, we're going to throw a layer of geogrid in between our backfill stone just to help stabilize it in case of, you know, years where we have even more water than this and the water starts to rise up. Just kind of help lock all the stone together. Yeah. It's running. Always runs. And then I just X out what I don't want. Yeah. Or if anything that looks embarrassing like that's something I did, I can cut it out. But when, you know, Trav or Ben do it, I just leave it in. <laughs> That's why I edit a lot more of my stuff out. You guys are the stars of the show. So we got this back like footing almost of the wall. Not really a footing, but this is the top of the rock wall and then they poured the concrete cap on it. But this is nice and sturdy, so we're going to be putting the fabric over it and the geogrid over it to help interlock everything nice.
It is windy today. Trav, tell these guys what you think about the $360 recliner, movable recliner. Pretty good. I, if you were injured, I could get you off the job site with that thing. <laughs> oh my gosh. He was sitting on the side of it because we were all just sitting down, hanging out for a little while and talking. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you got to Ben, look at this dude. That's a recliner. Oh my gosh. Bro, that's, that's a lunch that spot is. is what that is. I'm buying three more. <laughs> Imagine we have to buy a trailer to carry all the wheelbarrow. Start lifting people up and walking around. Yeah. I told him, I said, if you got injured on the job site, dude, I could get you out of here with that thing. Yep. Hey, right, low and slow, man. Yep. The gain's at 9.5. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. I'm so glad I didn't even think of that trap, but if there's ever a day I just want to chill out or you know, I start getting overheated. Buy some cushions. <laughs> Cushion on the bottom and the back, Trav. Oh my gosh. Hey, it'd be more comfortable than that block wall. Yeah. So we're doing well over here. I think we got here around like 10 o'clock. Did some work. Sat and chatted with my dad for a while. And um, got some more backfilling done. We're gonna stop there for now. We're gonna get this all graded and ready to screed. That way we can bring some pallets of pavers down and get them close. And we're not going so far traveling with pavers. We're pretty much basing this off of the wall. We're gonna set up um, a, a guideline over here when the time comes. But we're gonna go off this wall and I don't think it's gonna be perfectly square with this house or the stairs but it's better to sacrifice it on that end because we're putting a decorative stone bed along the house as opposed to squaring it off with the house and then having to cut this entire line of the wall off square so this is rough graded but definitely not where it needs to be and that's my next task is to get it closer Shown it in a couple videos, not everyone's seen it. This is the slip knot that I use when I hook up a string. The loose side on your left side, you go under the right string, and then you go under both strings, up and over both strings, and through that loop. It makes like a D with this string going back through. And then you got it right there. You pull it against the slip knot and you wrap it around the stake and it's nice and tight and if you want to take it off you pull this loose end and it pulls all the, sh the tension off of it and you can go hook it to a stake again afterwards very useful Trav huh yeah I'm gonna put it where I think an eighth of a slope towards the water is all right what do you think is gonna happen All right, that's where it is. <laughs> Pull it nice and tight. Oh, that's gotta be an eighth trap. It's gotta be. Hold on, let me hold this so you can confirm, Trav. This is eyewitness news with Travis. Trav, is it perfect? Come on, grade me, Mr. Professor. <laughs> Pretty good? Hey. hey. <laughs> wow, that was nice. I'll take it. I'm gonna put a Mac on that thing now. Trav, I told you there's something inside of me from doing this for so long. I have an eighth slope, like, um, what is it called? A gyro in my body. I know where it is. 
these people are gonna be like, ah, you already put a line there and you knew. Dude, that was legit right there, Trav. Just like last week. Man. We both got it right on the money last week. Yeah, we did. First try. Alright, so that's our eighth of a slope towards the water. The next important spot, and that is where does that line up over here? Because technically speaking, we'd probably want the back of this to be level as well, just because of the way everything is. You know, we need level when you're looking at it because this wall is level. It's not built for a slope, it's level. We just need the whole thing tilted forward. That's the best, best option. So we know that that's, that's our corner point now for our height while we're checking our grade. So go right to the bottom of the step and I'm gonna tell you when it hits level. Bottom of the step or just yep. on top of the concrete? Depends on where the, the level hits. Okay, stop. Go up a little. Drive. Right there? Do you remember when I told you that's where I want the top of paver? The top of paver going? Hey, I think we're good. Let me come up, make a mark on that. All right. Now listen, I'm not going to take credit for that, okay? That gyro inside my body, God blessed me with that. So I'm just thankful for it. That's what experience is right there, honestly. There's a lot of people that like inquire about, you know, how do I do this? How do I go about getting jobs? How do I... How, how do I do this? How do I do that? You have to go do it. If you're uncomfortable with a big job, you go, do, you go somewhere and they have a big job that you're uncomfortable with, tell them you're uncomfortable with it. Start off on small patios, small walkways, small sets of steps. The more you do it, the better you're gonna get. And I also recommend always that you go work for other people. Don't get into something that you've never done before and go sell, sell the jobs. You don't know what you're selling. You've never done it, you know? Getting into this business with no experience, that's tough. That's very, this business is already hard enough. Never mind getting into it without experience. So in that case, Trav, I think we're gonna need a little bit more stone on this back end. Nice. I think it skipped underwater. You think? <laughs> Look at this one. It's not even a skippable rock. Yeah, it is the bottom. Ah, uh, two. I beat you. Hey. <laughs> two. Ah, two. <coughs> two. Two in a splash. Look at that one, Trav. Is that Ben? Three! I got three! <laughs> so I get asked how we level off our base stone quite often. And I'm gonna show you right here. We pretty much rake everything as close by eye as we can. And again, that goes back to like what I was talking about experience. The, the more patios you've raked the base stone out for, the better you're going to get at it. And honestly, I can get pretty close to our slope just by eye. And then I use our screed rails, which are these metal pipes, which are one inch interior diameter and one and a quarter inch exterior diameter. It's a nice strong steel that you can hammer into place without worrying about bending it or warping it. If you get a thinner gauge or less strong um, steel pipe, those can bend or warp over time, not giving you a truly straight edge to screed off of. And I definitely do not recommend using PVC conduit pipe. Some people do, but you can end up getting like a dip or a hole in the patio really easy that way because it's just not a strong, true line.
But anyway, we use these for screeding, but I also use them to check our grade. Once you get the three quarter raked out, you can lay these pipes down, set them in a little bit with the hammer, and check it with your level. And if you end up being a little too low, you can pick the pipe up, add some more stone, rake it out. Or if you're too high, you can pick the pipe up and then pull some stone out of the way. It's a really good way to gauge your base, and it's how I've been doing it since I started. But anyway, once we do get it to the correct grade, then we're going to compact all our three-quarter nice and tight, and we're going to be on to our screeding process. But that's going to be in the next video where we show you how we screed and lay our pavers. Hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to see a lot more content like this. And let me know in the comments below if you got any questions or feedback. I love to hear from you guys. But you already know the deal. Until the next one, God bless. Peace. <laughs>